the original Solo X SPL subwoofer, originally introduced in 2003, 20 years ago, is an 18-inch model. A complete shock to the industry with Kicker introducing an SPL woofer that was very simple to recone if needed just by dropping in a replacement called the Spare. Let's pull out the 2003 Car Audio and Electronics directory, check out the Kicker subwoofers and see the S18X shown here. Check out that price, $1,600, good lord have mercy. Now places like Sonic Electronics had these for sale for $699, but still if we adjust for inflation, that's around $1,150 in today's money. Step forward one year to 2004, we'll check the directory here and see there's three models, the 10, the 12 and the 18, ranging from $1,300 to $1,600. But remember, $2,100 to almost $2,600 in today's money. Get out that black Amex if you want one of these. <laughs> if we look at the May 2004 card in electronics, they talk about what was at CES. Kicker had some new products, of course, and the S10, S12X were some of those models. 2,500 watts RMS, 5,000 peak. It won an award at CES. Go kick. <laughs> Anyone who's ever been in the IT industry knows the extensive use of acronyms. It seems Kicker took this on as well with these new Solo X subs. Several parts of these subs, including the SLAM or the Spare Lockdown Attachment Mechanism, also the Spare, which is the Simple Pull Apart Insertable Replacement, in other words, the drop-in. You also can't forget the BAM which is the basket and motor assembly, a cast aluminum basket and included triple stack or double stack magnet depending on the size. Next up, we have the splat or the speaker precise location alignment tool. Wouldn't you have loved to have been in the meeting to decide these acronyms? These days we take for granted the number of different subs and models and brands that are available for sound pressure. However, you have to remember, back in the day there was no Sundown, DC Audio, Criminal Audio, PSI, etc., so these kickers were before that. We did have things like the Rockford Fosgate Power HX2 for around 500 bucks. We had the Digital Designs 9512, which is around 640. We also had the Mats Juggernaut 12, which is around 700 bucks. And of course, Serwin Vega with their Stroker series was around 750. Also, MTX had the 15 inch RFL 152 for around 1,000 bucks. But you have to remember the kicker was quite a bit more expensive than these. First gen, it's available from 2003 to 2006, second gen 2007 to around 2010. Easiest way to discern was the color of the cone. First gen was gray, second gen was black. Now what was really interesting is when the second gens were introduced, they mentioned that you could fit the spares from the first gen into the second gen basket and vice versa. Very cool. Now for today, we're going to compare the second gen to the newest Latest generation, we'll call it the third gen that was just recently released. So let's unbox the second gen model and see what it's all about. Kicker was kind enough to send me this second gen Solo X just so we could compare it with the new version. I was really blown away with how easy it was to pull this speaker apart. Super modular, just literally take the screws out of the top. You could do this while it was in the box if needed. And yeah, I'd never seen this before. I know some of you guys have seen it and you know, know what it's all about, but I'm assuming a lot of you are like me and have never seen something like this. Just pulling out the recone and putting in a new one without having to use any glue or anything. Super simple and super cool. Far as specs go, these were rated 2,500 watts RMS, stitch rubber surround, titanium deposit impregnated cone, three inch voice coil for the 10 and 12 inch model. And the 18 had a three and a half inch voice coil. Also, as far as box size goes, for the 12, three cubic foot was the compact size, or how about six cubic feet tuned to 45 hertz for the SUV box, and then six cubic foot tuned to 68 hertz for the SPL Burt box. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! The spares or drop-in replacement for second generation retail for 279 went for about 229, which is about 325 in today's money. Now, let's go on to October 2020. 
the Kicker Unmasked Live Show. This is the very first one they did. I was actually a guest on this show. And yes, they introduced the Solo X12. This was an early pre-production model. And they showed us how it worked. We were all blown away with how the sub looked. And we're ready to get one. Now, there was some delay in getting the sub. Rumors are the sub was so heavy that it sunk, I don't know how many different container ships. That along with all the COVID delays, man, we were waiting. We're like, where's our sub? One eternity later. So finally, two and a half years later, we get the Solo X L7X12. Let's unbox it and see what's inside. You know, it's so cliche to say you have to see it in person to see how big it is. This is one for sure. I mean, if you've ever seen the Grand Canyon, you just know that pictures don't do it justice. This subwoofer is the same way. You really can't get an idea of how massive it is until you see it in person. Decided to show a few different objects like a Pepsi can and a two liter bottle. That gives you somewhat of an idea. At the time of this video, these were dealer exclusive $700 either for the one ohm dual voice coil or the two ohm dual voice coil models. Three inch voice coil, as well as a triple stack ferrite magnet make these a beast. 2000 watts continuous power handling kicker tested over a hundred hours at 2000 watts. As far as box recommendations, three cubic feet tuned to 31 Hertz. If you want to see how the recones work with these, I'll leave a link in the video description to Hi-Fi Vega. He did a full video showing how to pull out the insert and put it back in. It's a little bit more complicated than the generation two to be honest but hey that's what you get for having new technology tighter voice coil things like that it's also important to say generation one and generation two you could swap the spares and use different ohm loads however with the new version the dual ones and dual twos are not interchangeable due to extremely tight tolerances in the voice coil gaps generation two here for the width nine inches wide the cone itself Generation 3, about 7.7 .7 inches wide for the cone itself. Back to the outer dimension, 13 inches for the Generation 2, and about 11 and a half inches for the new model. Also, the surround is about 1 inch wide on the older model, whereas it's about 1 and a half inch wide on the new model. Showing the two subs here, you can obviously tell the new sub is definitely taller, deeper, has more magnet on it. But as far as the magnet diameter, around eight and a quarter inch on both of these, it's just the old one is chrome plated where the new one is black, but you can see the double stack versus the triple stack magnet here. And yeah, there you see it. Definitely a difference here in the depth, the mounting depth of the speaker, and also in just the full beefiness and the weight and all that. We're gonna get to the weight here in just a minute. As far as the mounting depth goes, the old model was around eight and three quarter inch for the mounting depth, where the new one is just a little bit over 10 inches. As I mentioned, the additional slug in the new magnet definitely gives it some weight difference. The original generation two, 47 pounds, eight and a half ounces, which is about 21.6 kilograms for the weight. That's still pretty beefy for a sub. However, the newer one, yeah, this one right here takes some Arnold arms to pick it up. This one weighs 63 pounds and nine ounces or approximately 28.8 kilograms. So definitely more beefy. The generation two solo X did mention it had a three way connection system allowing bounding post terminal block or barrier strip, but these are just bounding posts and I don't see how you can swap them out. It obviously didn't come with those, but on the new model, you can see it does have the push terminal here as well as a terminal block, which is very, very useful. That way you can wire in as thick wires you want up to eight gauge and multiples if you want to as well to keep all the power you need going to the subs. Now for this part, we're just gonna show some free air flex of the generation two as well as a new generation just to have a little fun. So sit back and enjoy the flapping.
right, yo, that old school sub was flapping. I didn't want to give it too much power because I didn't want to blow it up because it's not mine. But yeah, let's move to the new Solo X. leave a link below to live allow with andy where he did some in-car spl testing of this sub in his eclipse he was able to get 147.6 in the kick and about 147.2 on the dash at 34 hertz that's impressive now let's move on to the pros and cons things i like things that could be better of the generation two first up simple repair never seen anything easier you can use the d1 d2 or d4 drop-ins and they're interchangeable as well as first and second gen are interchangeable. Includes a template and hardware, high power handling and high output, but these things were expensive. So let's talk about the cons. Yeah, suggested so retail $1,400 on this 12. The lack of spare drop-ins now available make this sub kind of difficult to want to buy now. 10 gauge binding posts, polarity markings are on the bottom of the sub, six cubic foot recommendation, and it really was designed for SPL. Now, what about the new Solo X, the 2023, or what I call the Generation 3? Price is $699, which is half of the old model. 8-gauge spring-loaded or terminals for your speaker connections has a wide surround, extreme excursion, 2,000 watts of continuous power tested over 100 hours of kicker, replaceable drop-in, have you seen, designed for SPL and daily use, so it is a multifunction speaker. Some of the cons... It was 2.5 years after introduction before we got it in hand. Currently the 12 inch model only. They're not interchangeable between the D1 and D2s. Reconing is more complex than the G1 and G2. Polarity markings again are on the bottom. So it's hard to see that when you're looking straight at the sub. Availability is limited right now. And yes, yeah, $700 is still expensive for a subwoofer. We cannot deny that. Now I know some of you may be saying, where's the in-car testing? Where's the SPL? Where can we see this in a box? Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the box until after this video was already in progress. So I'm going to do a future video showing several different boxes that I got in, including the Gately box. So can't wait to see that. Make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. High Octane is pumped by the power of Kicker, America's music machines. We got loud. I had to come over here to shake your hand because I must say, I saw the beast and that is one of the most incredible rigs I've ever seen, systems and everything. It's an awesome piece. We're all very, very proud of it. It's taking a lot of work. blow hair, we can burst things. You can fix this? Uh-huh. <laughs> she can yeah. fix my big perm. So I, I could just see you going down, you just, you just kind of going down, everyone's staring you down, you're like, what's up? Getting all the, getting all the vibes? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, it, it is not a drivable, it is a competition vehicle. Oh, so it just As parks and looks beautiful. Well, it plays and it's loud. You, you out rock the hard rock. <laughs> you know what? If it's too loud, you're too old, right? <laughs>